Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we're going to be looking at the Cam Newton signing in New England and the fantasy football impact of that signing because I'll tell you right now, there are a good amount of players who are going to be impacted in terms of fantasy football from this signing. So I'll try to keep it brief, but still getting into a good amount of depth and giving you every single thing that I know and that I think that helps me come to my conclusions about who it's going to affect, how and why, and all of that kind of stuff. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. So first, we're going to look at the specifics of the actual signing because this is very, very important for fantasy football. And for those of you guys who are just watching to hear about the Cam Newton signing and everything, obviously this is going to be really helpful and really informative for you guys too. So, Cam Newton was signed by the New England Patriots to a one-year deal for the veteran player's league minimum salary, which is $1.05 million. So that's a relatively low contract. That's the bare minimum that he could have been signed for. However, with incentives, this contract is worth up to $7.5 million. The reason why this is really, really important, especially for fantasy football, is because it shows exactly what the Patriots think of Cam Newton and how they plan on using him. So for those of you who don't know, teams can offer incentives to players, usually for individual stats and performance. Like, for example, the Seahawks offered Eddie Lacy incentives to lose weight. It was something like $55,000 for every five pounds lost, but that's kind of different. That's personal stuff. This is just stats and performance that we're dealing with for Cam Newton here. So his incentives should be about performance and stats. And for quarterbacks, the common incentives are passer rating, completion percentage, interception percentage, and yards per pass. But to qualify for any of those, you have to have at least 224 attempts. This is as of 2012, so it may have changed a little bit like to 230 attempts or whatever, but it's relatively the same even now, so they're not gonna just change everything, you know, and I'll get to my main point here, and even if they changed a few of the details on here, that's not what matters, because I'll get to my point soon. Also, total yards and touchdown passes are other incentives, but total passing attempts doesn't necessarily qualify you for this, because obviously yards and touchdown passes are going to come with more attempts. So. Those are the incentives that are most commonly offered to quarterbacks in their contract. Now this means that if Cam is absolutely atrocious and the Patriots do not want to start him after seeing, let's say, how bad he does during preseason, they can just bench him and he's not going to get any incentives, right? Because whatever agreement they made on total yards for an incentive, if they said 3,000, well, if they bench him, he's not going to get that incentive. He's not going to get completion percentage or interception percentage because he's not going to have that many passing attempts, if any. So if he's bad, the Patriots can bench him without worrying about paying him $7.5 million for just sitting on the bench. They can just pay him the $1.05 million, which is very reasonable for a backup quarterback. But if he's good and better than Stidham, he can play in the regular season, be the starter, and maybe he hits some of these incentives and can earn up to $7.5 million. So this just means that the Patriots aren't really sure if they're going to use Cam Newton or not. So Stidham starting at the beginning of the season is not out of the question. Had they barely given him any incentives and had a contract that's worth up to like $2 million, we would know that they didn't really plan on using him because there wouldn't even be a point in adding those incentives. But if he had... A contract that was worth 10, 15, 20 million dollars, excluding the incentives, just like a standard, you know, four year, 60 million dollar contract, excluding the incentives, that's 15 million dollars a year. That is what a below average and kind of risky quarterback signing could look like if you plan on actually starting him. So if he was signed to a one year, 15 million dollar deal, excluding incentives, just straight up $15 million, that could mean that the Patriots really planned on starting him, but they didn't. They gave him a mix of 
a very low base salary, but a lot of incentives. So clearly they're not sure if they're gonna use him or not. So given that, we can't say whether he is going to start or Stidham is going to start. Later in the video, I'll get to what I think is gonna happen, but for now, we're gonna start looking at the fantasy football impact of this. So first, let's start out. Tom Brady ranked 18th in air yards per attempt in 2018. That year, Newton ranked 28th. So we can already tell that Cam in 2018, and the reason why I look at 2018 is because we can't look at Cam's 2019 staff because there's nothing there. So 2018 is the most recent year for Cam, and he ranked 28th, Brady ranked 18th. So right there, we know Cam threw shorter passes on average than Tom Brady. In 2017, the five leading receivers in terms of targets on the Patriots were Christian McCaffrey, Devin Funchess, Kelvin Benjamin, Ed Dixon, and Greg Olson. So Christian McCaffrey is a running back. Funchess is a wide receiver listed at 6'4", 225 pounds. Kelvin Benjamin is listed at 6'5", 245 pounds. And as Booger McFarlane would say, he's about a Popeye's biscuit from being a tight end. Ed Dixon is a tight end, 6'4", 250, and Greg Olson, another tight end, 6'5", 255. So right there, what do we see? He likes targeting running backs, and he likes targeting big body receivers and or tight ends, but on the Patriots, there's not really any tight ends that are even noteworthy, so that's kind of irrelevant. All we really need to focus on is big body receivers and running backs. That is who... Cam Newton likes to target. Now look, James White is no Christian McCaffrey, but Cam Newton may even target James White more than Brady did, now that Cam ultimately has no chemistry with anyone else there. White could be his safety net. I really think that that is what's going to happen, especially considering that he loves to throw to the running backs. And in 2018, his average depth of throw or target was significantly lower than Tom Brady's. So as much as you want to say that Brady only throws short passes, Cam does it even more often. So he really likes throwing to his running backs. We can clearly see that. Now, I do think that James White should do well under Stidham, but I think that he still retains value with Cam Newton here. Cam Newton doesn't really affect James White that much. I think that James White will do good under Stidham because Stidham does like throwing short passes into the running back, and so does Cam. So I think that that kind of balances out. I don't think the Cam Newton signing really affects James White. He's gonna kind of put up the same production no matter who is starting under center in week one. Now, Nikhil Harry is the next player who we're gonna to get to. He is much more talented than Kelvin Benjamin and Devin Funches. So I'm sure that Harry is going to get his fair share of targets, especially if Cam Newton is playing because we know that Cam Newton loves throwing to big body receivers. Stidham was actually a pretty good fit for Harry in theory. He liked throwing two routes that Harry liked to run, but the issue is if he was a decent quarterback in the NFL and didn't need to pass to James White every single play because he's not scared or anything, then yeah, I think Harry would be good because like I said, he and Stidham are a pretty good match in theory. And I say in theory because like I said, if he were to do decent in the NFL, Stidham that is, if he were to do decent and be and not be scared, then Harry would get a lot of targets. But the issue is, Stidham has ultimately no NFL experience. We don't know how he's gonna be. If he's pretty bad, even though he likes throwing to big body receivers, we don't know if he would just decide to use James White as his pure safety net and kind of rule out throwing to Nikhil Harry. Because Nikhil Harry, is more of a contested catch guy, and he does like to run a lot more downfield routes than a guy like James White would. So it is a little riskier to throw to him if Jarrett Stidham is not comfortable throwing longer passes. Edelman is also there, and Edelman runs shorter routes than Nikhil Harry. So if Stidham were to do pretty bad, he could literally just target White and Edelman every single play. Now, although Cam is no Patrick Mahomes, we know that he is at least a startable NFL quarterback and can get the job done. Considering that he loves big body receivers, he should love Harry. Like I said, Stidham 
loves throwing to bigger receivers and all that, and so does Cam. But we know that Cam is capable of actually getting it done, and we know that he's not going to be scared and just choose to throw to James White every play. We can't really say the th- same thing about Jarek Stidham because we haven't seen how he does. He could just get super, super terrified of this competition and just throw to James White and Julian Edelman every single play. But Cam Newton, it's not going to happen there because Cam does have NFL experience. And we've already seen Cam Newton does like throwing to big body receivers like Kelvin Benjamin, like Devin Funchess, both of who are not as talented as Nikhil Harry, in my opinion. Also, the Patriots did use the 32nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft on Nikhil Harry, so this doesn't really matter if Cam or Stidham starts, but I'm just pointing it out. Patriots do want to use Nikhil Harry, so no matter who is starting under center, Nikhil Harry should be a priority for Bill Belichick to try to get used more in this offense this season. Now, overall, I think that we can feel more confident in Harry if Cam is starting under center week one. Now, the touchdown potential for the Patriots is much higher with Cam than Stidham. Sure, Cam could suck, but he also does have top 10 potential. And if he reaches that potential, this offense could be scoring a lot. And that would mean more touchdowns for Nikhil Harry, and he could legitimately have a chance for double-digit touchdowns. Under Jarrett Stidham, sure, he could be okay, but I don't see him being a top 10 quarterback and leading this offense to 27, 28 points a game. I don't really see that happening. So because of that, I do think that Nikhil Harry's touchdown upside is capped if Stidham were to start. Now, moving on to Edelman, if we look at what would happen if Cam Newton started, while yes, Cam could use Edelman as somewhat of a safety net, usually his primary safety nets aren't really guys like Julian Edelman right? He loved throwing to Christian McCaffrey and to tight ends. That wouldn't really favor Julian Edelman in this offense at all. Yes, he loved DJ Moore in 2018, but the thing is, Moore wasn't really his safety net. Moore was very different than Edelman also. He's shifty, he's fast, and although he's not really known to be a deep threat, his route tree is very different from Edelman's, and he has a lot more potential to break out for a big game than Edelman does. Edelman is a pure possession receiver. DJ Moore isn't as much of a possession receiver. He wasn't as much of a safety net. And I don't really think that Cam would favor Edelman as a safety net because he could use James White or a tight end on New England as a safety net as well. Although they don't really have many good tight ends, but who knows, maybe Cam Newton will have some chemistry with one of them. Now, let's look at where Edelman's ADP is. His ADP is hovering around the eighth round. And with Stidham under center, I think that's fine because Stidham does like throwing those shorter routes to possession slot receivers, which is exactly what Edelman is. I think that under Stidham, Julian Edelman should be a very, very good bet. And I was actually targeting him a lot in the eighth round. But... If Cam is going to be starting, I don't think he's going to target Edelman a lot. And considering that you can get Nikhil Harry rounds and rounds later, I wouldn't really want to take Edelman in the eighth round if Cam Newton's going to be starting. Unless his ADP moves far down, I will no longer be taking Edelman that often like I was prior to the Cam Newton signing. Now, as far as other running backs go, we already covered James White, but let's look at Sonny Michelle and Damian Harris because they're more of the actual runners on the team. They're the running backs. James White is a receiving back. So if we're looking at the actual runners on this team, Sonny Michelle, Damian Harris, I do think that their value gets lower because of Cam. This is if Cam Newton actually starts. So Cam is big, right? per player profiler, which is what you're looking at right now. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check out playerprofiler.com. So per player profiler, he's 6'5", 248. He will be used on the goal line. He is a good rushing quarterback, and he's very, very big. There will be some QB sneaks with Cam Newton. He will take away some of the touchdown potential 
that Sony Michelle and or Damian Harris could have. Also, James White and Burkhead have pretty much a monopoly on third downs for running backs in this offense. So Michelle and Harris aren't going to have a big receiving role. They're really going to be reliant on touchdowns. And like I said, Cam Newton will cap their touchdown upside. Also, this goes for Cam Newton or Stidham starting. It doesn't really matter. But whoever it is, they're not going to be as good as the Patriots were with Tom Brady. So they're going to be down in more games and they're going to be passing it more often just because they're going to be trailing in more games than they're used to. So just by default, Michelle and Damian Harris aren't going to be in as many plays as some people may expect. Now, Burkhead isn't really fantasy relevant though. So James White is used more. So Burkhead, we're not even going to cover, but Burkhead may take away a few snaps from Michelle and Damian Harris. But in fantasy, we're not drafting Burkhead. Unless James White goes down, Burkhead isn't really fantasy relevant. Also, I think that the Patriots would use these actual runners, Damian Harris and Sonny Michelle, once again. I do think that they would use them more if Stidham was under center, since they don't know how he's going to be, and there's a lot more unknowns with him than Cam Newton. If Cam Newton starts, they know that he's at least capable of winning an NFL game, so they'd therefore be a little more lenient to just pass the ball more. But under Stidham, they don't know how good Stidham's going to be, and they therefore might want to run the ball a little more and just rely on those running backs more than they would if Cam Newton was starting. So overall, I do think that Sony Michelle and Damian Harris's value will definitely take a noticeable hit if Cam Newton starts under center in this offense in week one, as opposed to if Jarrett Stidham does. Now, what about Cam himself? What is the fantasy impact of him signing here? Now, obviously, he's worth more now than he was two days ago because he is signed to an NFL contract. But looking at exactly how we should approach Cam Newton, let's just remember that we don't even know if he's going to start. We covered the contract, and we know that the Patriots don't know if they're going to start him. So we don't even know if Cam's going to start. In redraft, I expect him to possibly be going off the board as the quarterback 15, which is completely absurd. I feel like his ceiling is a low-end quarterback one, but he's most likely not even going to start or barely even be startable for a fantasy football team. So going as a quarterback 15 is way, way too high. Now, in Dynasty, it seems like a lot of people are hyping him up. People might begin to value him as a low-end quarterback one in Dynasty, and that's even more absurd than what people might value him in redraft. His career might be over if he messes up this chance. If he doesn't do well in a New England offense, I don't know if teams are really going to want to sign him and give him another chance. And even if he doesn't mess this opportunity up and he does well in New England, like I said, first of all, I don't think that he'll be anything better than a low-end quarterback one. And just remember that he's 31 years old and a lot of injuries through the last few years. Those injuries are going to hinder his performance, and I doubt that he plays at a high level for more than four years, assuming he even plays at a high level this year. We don't even know if that's going to happen, but if he does, I doubt that he plays at a high level past the age of 35. Now, in redraft, if you take him at the end of the draft just as a high upside backup, if you already have a really, really good quarterback like Dak, like Mahomes, like someone like that, I do think that it's a decent pick, but take him with your 14th or 15th round pick not with your ninth or 10th round pick. In Dynasty, I would not try to trade for him. If I had him, I would honestly try to trade him right now. This is the same thing with Antonio Brown, right? Last season, he was getting really hyped up after he went to the Patriots, but anyone who traded him once he went to New England made a lot of profit, and anyone who kept him clearly regretted it. Now, finally, we're gonna look at Stidham, First of all, you shouldn't have even really been thinking about taking him in redraft to begin with. So you shouldn't have to even think about that anymore. So redraft, he was already out of the question, but now he's even more out of the question. Do not take him in redraft. But in Dynasty, I do think that even if Cam wins the job here, 
Stidham still could start in New England in a few years once Cam starts to cool off and get to an older age. That's if Cam Newton even wins the job. If he doesn't win the job, Stidham is a starting quarterback for New England, possibly for many, many more years. And remember that even if Cam does get this job, and even if he plays at a high level for a while, Stidham will still most likely get a shot somewhere else. A team will sign him to a contract and give him a chance. So if people are panic trading Stidham, and you could use another quarterback, I don't mind trading for him, as long as you're only giving up someone who you're most likely not planning on starting unless you somehow get like really unlucky with buys and injuries one week. But overall, as long as you're not giving away a core piece of your team, I do think that trading for Stidham in Dynasty is a decent move for sure because his value is at an all-time low right now. It's never going to be lower than now unless Cam starts week one. Then obviously his value then will be a little lower. But people right now are treating it as if Cam Newton has this job locked up. And that's not the case. So I do think that now is a decent time to possibly go after Stidham if you can find the value. So what do I think is going to happen here? What do I think is going to happen in New England? Now, it really is super hard to tell. And we are going to have to wait for the reports to come out until we can really come close to being sure of anything. But my first guess as of now is that Cam Newton will be the starter in week one or at least be the starter sometime in the beginning of the season. I think that either one, the Patriots just play it safe and start the season with the veteran Cam Newton in week one and don't let Stidham possibly lose them a game and they just play it safe with the veteran who they know is a decent quarterback in Cam Newton. Or two, they start Stidham week one and possibly week two and quickly realize that he's very unpolished, has a lot more to learn, and then quickly take him out and shift over to Cam Newton in week two, three, or four, and let him play out a few more weeks, possibly even the whole season, and kind of just mentor Jarrett Stidham a little bit. So either Cam Newton gets the job, possibly gives it up to Stidham for a week or two, and then probably gets the job back after they see that Stidham's not great, or they just start out with Stidham playing and quickly move back to Cam Newton, because I do think that Cam Newton currently is the better quarterback. So I do think that we should expect Cam Newton to start on the Patriots for the majority of this season. Now, also remember that the Patriots did sign Antonio Brown for a week and they actually used him. They had to cut him due to off the field issues after just one week, but had they never been put in that situation where they clearly had to cut him due to off the field issues, they clearly were going to use AB. They made it clear that as, for as long as they had him, they wanted to use AB. And I think that that is the same case with Cam Newton. And obviously, we don't really expect the same thing to happen with Cam Newton, where he has off the field issues and gets cut because of it. Sure, Cam Newton starts some drama, but it's sort of fun and games at the end of the day. And he's a likable guy and would never really do anything that AB did. Sure, maybe he does something, but I find that kind of hard to believe. And yes, you could say that the Patriots did sign AB to a $15 million contract for one year, which is why they always had the intentions of starting him. And Cam Newton can get a maximum of $7.5 million. But I still do think that despite the different contract, I do think that Cam Newton is a player like Antonio Brown, where some people thought they were a little washed up and they knew that they were taking a risk, but they went for that big name guy and are planning on using him and hoping that they can find the old player who used to be in his prime and hopefully allow him to help their team. I think that's what they wanted out of Antonio Brown. They wanted to find the Antonio Brown who really they saw last year in Pittsburgh. Well, last year in the perspective of the Patriots in 2019, two seasons ago, Antonio Brown, but when the Patriots were signing him, it was one year ago. And I think that's what they want to do with Cam Newton. They want to find the old Cam Newton who was in his prime and hopefully find that and use that to their advantage. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Like I said, no one knows who's going to start, but I do think that it'll be Cam Newton. And just as a quick recap, I think in terms of Stidham versus Cam Newton, James White's value pretty much stays the same. Nikhil Harry's value increases. Edelman's value decreases a little bit. And Michelle and Damian Harris's value definitely
decreases a good amount. Now, any tight end on this team I don't really think is worth drafting in redraft, but I do think that in Dynasty, maybe you could look at taking one of them. I do think that there's a chance, obviously, that Cam Newton does use one of the tight ends a little bit. I don't really know which one it's going to be because, honestly, I think that it's up to Cam Newton which one he likes the best. But I do think that we have to watch out for it because Cam Newton did like using Greg Olson for as long as they were together. So it is something to look out for, obviously. But overall, I think that Nikhil Harry is the one and only player who would really benefit from Cam Newton coming to New England. And then James White, his value stays the same about. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you liked this video, just know that I put out pretty much daily content every single day on this YouTube channel. So if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get more of this wonderful content every single day. I also have a Twitter account, which I tweet out many, many times a day. So follow me there as well. I will start to do giveaways here and on Twitter. So there's definitely a reason to go follow me on Twitter. And I do also have some of you guys in my videos. I'm going to do more mock drafts with you guys. And the only way to get in one of those videos is if you are subscribed to me here and following me on Twitter. So make sure you did both of those if you want to be in one of my videos. And also, if you enjoyed, hit that like button because it does show that you enjoyed this video and it keeps me motivated to keep making these videos so I know that you guys enjoy them. And what I want you guys to do in the comments below is let me know what you think of Cam Newton's situation. What do you think? First, what do you think is going to happen with Cam Newton and Stidham? Who do you think is going to start? That's what I want to know because that's the real question here. Who do you think is going to start in week one, at least, Stidham or Cam Newton? Let me know in the description below. I'll reply to your comment. I'll make sure of it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.